everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be trying out a silicone rubber pigment. It's made by Smooth On and it's called Silk Pig. I've gotten a few questions recently and questions in the past about pigmenting silicone rubber. I didn't even know it was a thing you could do, to be perfectly honest. Um, the way I even found out about this stuff was I recently bought a Smooth On product called Dragon Skin. And there was the link to this within that because they are compatible. So that's actually the silicone I'm going to be using for this today. Um, it says specifically for color pigmenting, psycho paint, dragon skin, ecoflex, just other smooth on products. So I'm going to try it in the dragon skin. And I also want to try it in another silicone just to see what happens. I don't know if they're going to be compatible. They're probably not. But I'm going to try it in tap plastics platinum silicone as well just to see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and take out the products and check them out and read the literature inside. One of my friends and subscribers, her name is Rena, actually messaged me after I did my Dragon Skin demo and review because I brought up the fact that I was going to review this stuff. And she gave me a few tips. One of them was use as little as possible. That's always a really, really great rule of thumb when you are using any kind of liquid pigment. Start small. Use just a teeny tiny amount because you can always add more and you can never take away. And she also said don't double dip. Don't take a little bit out and then mix it in the silicone and then go back in there because it will have a reaction and it will cause the colorant to like congeal. So definitely I'm glad I got that advice because I probably mindlessly would have dipped back into it. So that's good to know. So the kit that I got has two, four, six, eight, nine different colors. You can buy bigger containers of just one color, but I wanted to try them all out. I'm gonna be working today with the yellow and the black, and then I'm not sure what color, I think the blood red. The comments I've gotten recently, or questions rather, about how to go about making a project. Somebody inquired about using something that would need yellow pigment, someone inquired about something needing black pigment, so though that's why I'm going to be using these two colorants. And then I'm just gonna use a blood red because that's one of my favorite colors. So I think before I even look at that, I'm gonna open it up and see. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm gonna sort that out and I will be right back. So I got rid of the little foil seal. That is what it looks like. I can't tell if it smells like anything. I got the virus at the end of February and my sense of smell is still a little bit compromised. I'm assuming it doesn't smell like anything. I honestly, I don't know. So now I'm gonna go ahead and see what literature came with this stuff. Okay, so this is just a little insert. Okay, that's not terribly relevant. Let's see. All right, silk pig silicone pigments are used for coloring tin cure silicone rubber compounds such as Mold Max, translucent tea, okay, so on and so forth. Custom colors are possible by blending different silk pig colors. Attaining just the right color for your application may require trial and error testing. Small scale testing is recommended. Silk pig pigments are very concentrated, so a little goes a long way. All right. Directions. Pre-mix pre silk pig pigment in container before dispensing as settling may have occurred. I kind of saw that in the yellow one. Add silk pig color into the part A side of the silicone rubber system and mix well before adding part B. All right. Do not overload silicone rubber with silk pig or cure inhibition may occur. Okay, good to know. I would have honestly mixed up the silicone and then added added the colorant and like apparently that is not the way to go about it. I'm going to add it to the part A and then add the part B. Okay, Smooth On offers this color guide as a reference focal point. Oh, I don't know what they're talking about. Okay, results will vary from one silicone material to another. The end user is solely responsible. Okay, all right, well, that's pretty straightforward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything set up and I'll show you what projects that we're gonna be working on today and I will see you in a little bit. So the projects I'm gonna be working on today are, I'm just gonna make some bows. I'm gonna take a plastic mold and I'm just gonna make some little silicone squishies. It's just a bow mold and I'm gonna use the blood red for that or maybe like turn it into a pink, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm gonna be using plastic mold. And then one of my subscribers, asked me about how to make molds that are black and he showed me a picture, like an example, 
And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that since I specifically got asked about how I would go about doing something like that. I'm just going to take this lotus thing. It's like a Sailor Moon crystal lotus. And I'm going to make a mold of that and I'm going to make the mold black. Now with this, one of my subscribers messaged me recently and she said that she wanted to make the stapler in jello from the office. And I thought that that was just the best idea ever. That's so funny. So I'm going to do that. I have a little stapler that I've had for years. I have not used in years and I'm going to see if I can make the stapler in jello. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stapler and the silicone in here. I'm going to pigment it yellow. I don't know if there's going to be enough transparency. I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to see through the silicone. And if I can't, then it would just be better to go about that with resin. Um, resin might be the best call. Anyways, whatever the case may be, I'm going to try and make a stapler in jello with this yellow pigment, this stapler and this cup. I'm just going to pour it right into there. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to make the black mold. So I got my crystal lotus piece situated and ready to be made into a mold. It's just squeezed into some sulfur free clay and there's a cutter around it. If you would like to see me expand on that, you can actually go and check out the dragon skin tutorial or any of my silicone tutorials really. This is just how I go about making molds. I'm also not going to show the pouring of this stuff. Like I said before, there is a tutorial for it. If you'd like to see this stuff in action, go ahead and go check that out. So what I'm going to do is is I'm going to use this cup right here. It's just a little clear measuring cup and I'm probably gonna do, okay, I'm gonna do 100 milliliters. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna get the silicone poured into here and then I'll see you when it's time to put the pigment in. I'm gonna be using just these little, little spatulas to incorporate the pigment, mix it up like it said, and put it into the silicone itself. So yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so I poured part A up to the 50 milliliter line on this cup because as I said, I'm going to mix up 100 milliliters. So the other 50 is gonna be the part B. As per the directions, I'm going to take my product and I'm going to stir it up to incorporate it just in case there's any settling. It doesn't really look like this one has that issue, but regardless, we're gonna stir it up. All right, I have no idea how much to mix in, so I think I'm just gonna use what is on the stick for now. We'll see how that goes. Now I'm just going to take a knife and mix it up. Yeah, and that looked like that was plenty, just that teeny tiny amount. But then the part B is going to come in and it's probably going to dilute it down a little bit. So I feel like that's something that needs to be factored in. All right, so I think it's kind of like a gray color. I think I'm going to add a little bit more and just hope that wasn't a mistake. I'm going to take a new little deal. And I'll leave the link for these and anything relevant in the description area below. All right, I think that may be good. I don't want to I don't want to overdo it, but I don't want it to be too light. I don't know. All right, my part B is in there, so I'm going to go ahead and get this stirred up. It looks okay. It's a little bit gray as opposed to black. I'm going to try and add a little bit more real quick. All right, this is mixed up pretty well, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour it. All right, now I'm gonna put this aside and let it do its thing, and we will move on to the next project, which is gonna be the stapler in Jello. So for the stapler in Jello, I'm going to mix up a cup of the 
dragon skin. And I'm gonna pour some in here, and then any leftover, I'm just gonna pour into this little plastic Wu-Tang Clan mold because this is yellow as well. So, and with the other stuff, we just mix up the black when I poured the extra just into this little heart, so it'll make a cool little squishy. So yeah, that's what's going on here. So now I'm gonna get ready to add my colorant to my part A. Just like last time, I'm gonna mix it all up to incorporate it. That one did separate a little bit. And with this one, because I want there to be some clarity to it, I'm going to run the silicone through a vacuum chamber. You, of course, do not have to do that. I just happen to have a vacuum chamber, so it's a thing that I can do. I'll try and add a little bit more. I really hope I'm not adding too much. We're gonna find out later. Okay, I think that's good. So now I'm gonna add my part B. Okay, now I'm gonna mix it up and put it in my vacuum chamber and I will see you in a little bit when it's time to pour it. All right, I ran my silicone through a vacuum chamber. There's a few bubbles at the top, but nothing too bad. I just wanted to hurry and get this into here. So now I'm just gonna pour it in. All right, now I'm gonna pour any extra into this little Wu-Tang Clan deal. All right, now I'm gonna get set up to do the bows. And with the bows, I'm going to try and make the color more saturated, you know what I mean? I'm gonna like kind of push the limits on how much color you could put in there and maybe see if I find out how much is too much. So I'm gonna get set up for that and I'll see you in a second. Okay, I'm back. I put about half an ounce of part A into this cup, so I'm gonna add some of this blood red and I'm gonna put a pretty good amount and see if it inhibits the cure. And then I'll add the part B and mix it up. And then I tried a test with, I used the blue and I tried using it in the Tap Plastics Platinum Silicone and it completely inhibited the cure. I mean, I assumed it would, but yeah, this is super liquidy. It's just not gonna set up. If I had Let's Resin Silicone still, I would have tried it with that as well. I don't, but on that note, Let's Resin also makes silicone pigments. So if you like that silicone, I definitely do like that silicone. Um, you can buy the colorants for it. So yeah, these aren't, I'm definitely not interchangeable with tap plastics. I don't know about anything else. I'm just gonna use this knife. So that looks like a pretty healthy amount, especially for the amount of silicone. So I'm just gonna mix that in. Okay, now I'm gonna put in my part B and mix it up and we'll get ready to pour it into the molds. It's an okay shade of red. I would like to see it be just a little tiny bit bluer. So I'm gonna put some blue pigment in it real quick. And this is just the tiniest bit of blue. All right, so now I'm gonna pour this into my plastic molds. And then when these are all set up, we're gonna come back and pop all of the other pieces out and see how it went. All right, we're gonna let these set up and I will see you in a while and we'll check everything out. It's been a couple of hours now and everything is ready to come out of the molds and what have you. And just touching them, they feel very cured. The yellow feels great. The black does as well. They don't feel gummy or like sticky or anything like that. And even the ones that I accidentally jammed my finger into it earlier, um, even the ones I went a little heavier on the colorant with still feel good. So I feel like I could have put more colorant in there. I was just still being a little bit cautious, I think. So I'm going to start with the mold. I'm just going to take it off of its clay and plate. All right.
right, so that's what the mold looks like. And the top part I could just clean up with a little tape, like masking tape or packing tape or scotch tape or what have you. Cool, so that looks pretty good. It is a little bit on the grayer side, I feel like, and it feels very firm, so I could have gone a little heavier on the pigment with this. This is just the heart that I poured the extra into. All right, next I'm gonna pop out the little Wu-Tang. That's cool. And this is another one I could have gone heavier on the pigment. It feels very set up, it's very firm. That's way cool. All right, so now I'm gonna pop this out and I'm just gonna come in with a knife on the side. Coax it out. All right, so you can kind of tell what it is. I scratched the heck out of it on the side trying to get it out. Yeah, you can kind of tell. I think in order to get full visibility for something like this, it would have to be in resin. You'd have to use resin and use a transparent yellow dye. It was worth a shot though. It's a fun idea. I wish it was clearer. I wish you could actually see the stapler better. Yeah, it's still pretty neat though. All right, now I'll pop out the bows. All right, so here's what the bows look like. All right, so Final thoughts, would I use this colorant again? I totally would, and this was surprisingly fun and like satisfying, making these little silicone squishy pieces and coloring them. I had a lot of fun doing all of this. I wish this was a little bit more transparent, but we gave it a shot. Um, yeah, all in all, I really had fun. I would use this product again, and yeah, I guess that's really all I have to say about that. So I thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. I know I certainly did. And if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and all those things that go with YouTube. I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.